gonna turn it over just uh this one keep our bolts together and just to give us a solid thing to work from gives us a good work surface and something has made a nest in here let's get rid of that I won't be able to use that anymore well, I guess we probably could no, no, we're not going to be able to. Okay. The way these things are wired up from the factory is there, there's 36 coils here and you got three phases. So there's 12 coils in each phase and each of those 12 are wired in series. What this gives is, whenever we turn it with our, our magnets, lots and lots of volts, but low amperage. What we want is more volt, or less volts, but you know, more, more current, more, more amps. So what we're going to do is we're gonna break it up into, so what we're going to do is break it up into, six sets of coils so there's going to be six coils in each set with each of those sets having two coils wired in a series so this one here is coil number one we're going to go that one and that one that one and that one that one and that one Do that right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And this one. The first and last coil, now mostly the first coil is pretty easy because your starting point is already done. These right here, these three wires here are our first phases. Then what we're going to do is take these three here and now before we attach them each other we're gonna have to sand the uh, the enamel off of them but these are our first phases these three will go together and to to start the next or the next set of coils so doing it again that's going to be What I like to do is get all of my connections together or get all the wires out to where I'm, I'm ready to connect them. Another thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these are aluminum, so you can't solder them, which is problematic. This one actually appears to be copper. I may actually be able to solder these. Ta-da! Okay, now we're ready to start making our connections, which I am not going to do sitting here on the floor! This thing is worthless. Okay, now I'm not going to film all three of these, but what we're going to do, like I said, we've got three wires we're going to pull them down like so and then they are coated in enamel so we have to use a little sandpaper 
strip that enamel off. I go about half, maybe three quarter of an inch back. Then I'm going to put the three together. I like using pliers to get my twist. A little acid or resin, flux, whatever. A small flame on a torch. Works better if you have a micro torch or if you're willing to sit here with an electric iron. Now I can already tell I didn't get enough of the I didn't get enough of the stuff off. Alright, let's uh we'll leave that idle. Okay. Not the prettiest joint I've ever done, but it will do the job. And I'm going to pull this joint up here. I pull it up as snug as I can. We're just going to tuck it around behind there. That does leave some wires kind of loose, which is not ideal, but it'll it'll work. And then we go on, that's our output for our first set, output for our second set. And I'm going to go ahead and go around and pull all of our joints together. These three go to these three. Here. This one's already done. Okay. So we repeat the process. sand them a little bit better. and glowy. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I sanded it off. Maybe the next one I'll burn it off.
they are copper they hold up to the heat usually these staters are aluminum and you have to sand and do this with crimps Imagine that, it's hot. Yep, burning off the uh, enamel works much better. myself I said that, but that one doesn't want to stick either. One more time.
this joint does not want to stick. There we go. Need more etch to it. All right, let's go back to. I didn't like the way this one worked out. Let's try getting in that one again. Okay. That is All six of our connections. One of them I did off camera, and then one of them these things start with because there's already a joint. So we only had to do four of those. Now we're going to run, we're going to start with this coil. We're going to run a wire from this one to this one to this one, to the first lead all the way around. And then we're gonna run the wire from the second lead all the way around, and then from the third all the way around. And that's gonna be our three phases out. Okay, we're on the last phase. I've already got the first two going all the way around. Just got my last little bits. Now this is probably something I should've put in there at the very beginning. Saves yourself a lot of, of strain and effort if you go ahead and you go around the whole stator and you mark your wires where you're gonna where you're gonna be connecting to them, and that way you're you're not having to strip these sections clean as you go around. So we're going to get this last bunch on there, and we'll be ready to test the stator. All right, all finished up. I've got each phase wired up. It's all ready to test. And now, I've never been very good at paying attention in this part of class, so I don't know what exactly my, my ohms should be between each of the three phases, but I know that they should be very similar. So we're gonna test that right quick. If I can put this where it can be seen. This one, half an ohm, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So, don't know whether that's good or not, but they're all the same. So I've got it all wired up, at least nice and even and straight. So now we're gonna flip this back over, we're gonna put the rotor on it, and then we're going to see what kind of voltage we get with a good hand turn. Rotor's back on, I've got it set up to a little rectifier. We're just going to see what kind of voltage we get. Using this little drill, I'm just spinning it up, just, just a voltage check. That's 12 volts, 18 volts actually. Twenty-five, twenty-seven. Twenty-five. 
45. Now, whenever the drill goes full blast, we're over 60. So I, I don't know how well that's going to work because I want this to work with that uh, 12 volt inverter. I guess it's going to depend on how much of a load it puts on the thing. We'll see. But that that thing says, you know, 10 to 30 volts. Now under load, it's going to keep the voltage a little bit more under control, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. It may still end up being a better 24 volt generator. But we're going to try it and find out. The next thing that we've got to do is figure out how to get this bolt pattern out of uh, our mount. So let's try that. I wasn't able to get all four, but I was able to get, uh, where did I drill those holes at? That one, that one, and that one. I was able to get three. And three will do the job. So now, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get these wires on the outside. Now one of the things that's happened here is that one of these wires, or two of them actually, ended up caught in the brush assembly. Oh, and this is something else, because I talked earlier about this thing squeaking. It's actually the brushes rubbing on the, the slip ring. What I'm going to do is, um, I'm just gonna drill a hole in the side. Bring them out the side, that way I can solder it up on the outside. And that, I mean, that's gonna be a nice solid connection. So, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's find a, an appropriate drill bit. That one looks appropriate. We're going to go kind of on the side. Let's see right about there. Another thing is after I get the wires going to it, I can solder, or not solder, but uh, you can seal it with silicone or something to keep the weather out. Let's say, where do my things come in? Let's say right here. this a little bit of footage there but basically what I did is I soldered some nice good leads I took out the damaged part got a little hole cut in the side of the case I'm gonna seal this up with silicone I'll probably put the shrink wrapped portions stick those both in a hole put a little zip tie on either side and uh, now we're gonna get the flange mount I'm just sucking it up at the uh, hitting the record button. All right, we got this all mounted. Of course, I would like to see, these should normally be, um, you know, soldered and properly covered connections, but if I do that, I have no, no way to disconnect this anytime I have to take it off except for cutting wire. So we're gonna use wire nuts. I'll tape them up before they're actually out there in the weather. Everything is mounted up. We're going to put the rotor and the blades on it. Right now we're gonna see how easy that is to work out. We have to be a bit careful because the, uh, <laughs> the shaft will push right inside it. Let's see what that did. Probably exactly what I said it would do.
not quite seeping in all the way. Something I can use as a little spacer. Just had a nut here that I probably threw someplace because I didn't need that. There it is. Which wasn't so windy. Go put it up today. Well, that's that. We've got our washing machine motor mounted to the front of a Chinese, inexpensive, cheap little turbine that wasn't doing what it was supposed to do anyway. So that's that for now. Tomorrow morning, hopefully, I will have a video. Let's put this thing up on the tower. So, stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching. Ah!